Hello, I'm Janelle Shala, and in this video I'm discussing barite. Barite's not a very popular mineral, mineral where crystal healers are concerned, but I'd like to set the record straight. I think it's a really important mineral. I want to convince you and inspire you to use it, so I hope I do that within the course of the video. I'll start off by showing you a lovely piece of clear barite, a cluster. It has some quartz points in it, don't be misled. The flat platy crystals are the barite, which is its normal formation, although sometimes you get fatter crystals with it as well. Barite's primary gift is one of expansion, particularly inner expansion, sort of opening out, feeling like you're spreading anything that you're holding really tight. Tight tension begins to open outward, spread out, and with that, you release whatever the cause of the tension is. It doesn't always release all of it because the tension may be coming from something that's very old and deep-seated, but at least it will begin the clearing process. The clear barite I've just shown you is very good for working with the crown chakra, and from that point of view, very good for clearing and focusing the mind. Sounds wonderful, but it is incredibly ungrounding. It is one of the most ungrounding crystals I've ever worked with. So I strongly recommend that you have some grounding crystal nearby to grab hold of when you come back from working with it, say working with it in meditation. So um, something like a pyrite cube is excellent, but if you want to use another crystal like smoky quartz, red garnet, um, black tourmaline, any of the above will bring you back, hopefully. Just use your favorite choice. When the crystals form parallel, you get something called coxcomb barite. It's a very pretty and unusual formation. And with that, we've got little crystals of anadonite, very sparkly, very pretty. And the two together here will help it to be more grounded, so you're not getting quite so thrown by it when you work with it. We're coming to one of my favorites now. I absolutely love this. I think it's stunningly beautiful. This is a blue barite, as you could probably guess from the color. Um, blue barite comes mainly from the US. There are some, I believe there has been some discovered in Morocco or possibly Afghanistan, and I can't remember for sure what I'm doing this. I'm not going to go look it up right now, so no emails if I've got it wrong, please. It's profoundly calming. You can probably guess if you're used to working with the chakras that this is the one that you would use to work with the throat. The expansion of the throat, I mean, so many of us hold tension there. It also will affect the thyroid. If there are problems with the thyroid, it will help to stabilize and also work with the pituitary. So balance and stabilize. Don't use it in lieu of, of taking thyroxin if you're somebody who's on that. That's uh, not a good idea. Uh, I use this a lot with people, with clients, who have a lot of tension and stress in the throat chakra. And it helps in other ways as well. It doesn't just release the tension, but it just, it's very, as I said, profoundly calming and soothing. And now we get to one that I use a great deal in my practice, but it is quite specialized. So. Um, I recommend this more for practitioners than for lay people. However, there's nothing to stop you trying it out. I think it's a very, very beautiful and important mineral. This is, um, I call it, well, to me it looks green, but almost everyone else calls it honey <laughs> or brown or yellow. So um, this particular uh, barite comes from China. There are other areas in the world where you get a similar color. I haven't actually tried them out, so I don't know if they work in, a same way, in the same way. But what I've found is this is profoundly clearing, really clearing for people who are, say, on drugs that are, um, I'm not talking about recreational drugs or drug addiction. I'm talking about drugs that people have to take for medical conditions, but they may not be affecting them very well. Those of you who are in practice out there will know that there are certain drugs like the serotonin uptake, re sorry, the SSRI type antidepressants. Very difficult to work with clients who are on these because it's difficult to find the client under the drug. 
I've also worked with somebody who was on, um, on methadone as they were trying to come off an addiction to morphine. The morphine was because they were seriously ill. It wasn't because they were trying to get high, but unfortunately they were on it for such a long period of time that it created a, a need. The methadone was much harder to work with than the morphine as far as I was concerned. It felt like her, the person's energy became very disjointed and very difficult, very kind of ethereal and difficult to get hold of. I didn't like the feeling at all when I was working with this client. However, using this on the client on the, the upper heart chakra cleared it enough that I was able to get to the client under the drug. So I use it with both those situations and you may find that there are other situations that are very helpful for you. Um, also recommend it for people who are trying to come off prescription drugs that have that kind of, not necessarily addiction, but habit forming where they have to get it out of their system before they can be completely clear. I think it's uh, really necessary in practice, but it may not be something that, if you're just buying crystals because you like crystals, may not be something you want to work with unless it's because it's beautiful. Finally, I mentioned barite rose a little bit earlier, and I'm going to show you two examples, one of which is mine, and I'm not sending it off to be close-up videoed, but I'm going to start off by showing you one that this is fairly typical. You can see the flat platy crystals. In this particular instance, there's a sand adhere to, ad adhering to it. And it is, as I said, very heavy. So you know this is, um, this is a barite rose, not a gypsum desert rose. One of my friends describes it as holding a small friendly animal. <laughs> I think that's probably a very good description. It works obviously with the color. It works with the lower chakras. And it's, the expansion seems to take place there. So this is one you can use when treating irritable bowel syndrome. Also if people hold a lot of tension, if you're using it for your own, your own practice. If you tend to hold a lot of tension in the abdomen, it's, it will help you to expand and release that tension. And in this case, as it releases, it flows down through the legs and into the earth. So very good way of clearing it. I wanted to show you an example of a very old, well, very old, that shows how old I am. I've had this piece since I was a child. This is a barite rose that really looks like a rose. And sometimes you can get pieces like this they're still available. These come from Mexico, by the way. And then there's another barite rose, if I can lift it. This is known as elephant ear for obvious reasons. 